Hi y'all, Billy here. Welcome to the Messy Studio. In the last two episodes of So You Want to Make Pens, we talked about lathes, what size you need, what size you should buy, and we talked about the tools that you need at a minimum to turn pens, and we talked about a few optional devices as well. In this episode, we're going to talk about pen kits. First, we'll talk about the manufacturers, or at least those here in the United States. We're also going to talk about the various pen kits. I'm not going to get into all of them. I'm just going to give you a basic overview, starting with the smallest going up to some of the most expensive. So let's get started. There are three major importers of pen kits here in the United States. One is Berea Hardwoods, one is Craft Supplies USA, and one is Penn State Industries. And you can buy pen kits from each of those sources. However, there are resellers. Distributor would have been a better word. That sell many of those same products. With Craft Supplies USA, not so much. They're pretty much your only source. But they're very responsive to things like group buys. So if you've got a, a wood turner's club or a pen maker's club close to you or around you, or you get involved with some of the group buys that in the past have been available through IEP or the International Association of Pen Turners Forum, uh, that can be a, a, a good avenue for you. And that's how I've bought a lot of my craft supply kits. Brio Hardwoods has a few resellers, distributors, and at least one of those has some exclusive Berea stuff and that's Arizona Silhouette. For many years Arizona Silhouette was owned and operated out of Arizona. Several years back it was bought out by a well-known pen turner amongst those that have been around this for a while and that's Barry Gross. Barry's written a number of books on pen turning and he's a good guy. Some Berea pen kits can be purchased through Ernie at Beartooth Woods. He's a really good guy to deal with. Some may also be acquired from a friend of mine, Ed Brown, at Exotic Blanks. And it's one of the best places to pick up some blanks or some unique blanks that we'll get into when we start talking more about pen blanks in another episode. The biggest reseller distributor of Penn State Industries pen kits that I'm aware of is Ryan at Wood Turnings with a Z. These three importer sites and the sites of the resellers distributors that I've talked about I'll include in the description down below so be sure and check those guys out they're really great guys to deal with I was fortunate enough to visit with Ryan and his gang at his shop twice while I lived up in Ohio they're located in Indianapolis so it was just a stone's throw away from me and I was able to run over there when I first started dealing with Ryan he was still working out of his basement they've since moved into a brick and mortar and things are going really really well for them. Again, anything that's PSI sells you can get from Ryan as well as additional things and you can get them cheaper than ordering through Penn State. Before we start talking about the pen kits themselves let's take a minute and talk about platings. Most of the kits are available in a wide variety of platings from the cheapest their chrome and standard gold plate. Many will offer a gunmetal style plating which looks basically like a dark chrome. Some offer a nickel silver, some offer a pearl silver, some offer a satin gold, some kits you can find in sterling silver plated, some kits you can find with a plating of what they call black titanium. You can find some in gold titanium. Some come in a plating they call platinum which is actually rhodium. It's in the same group in the atomic table and it's very hard plating. Some will actually mix a variety of platings together. I have Sierras for example that are a combination of gold titanium and platinum or rhodium. I have some that are a combination of black titanium and platinum. So which is best? Which plating will actually last the longest? The answer to that believe it or not is relatively simple there are a number of platings that are long-lasting and that wear really really well and each of these platings all of these manufacturers do the same thing in each of these platings the appointments those are the parts the, you know the, the plated parts 
The appointments are also covered with enamel, so that helps add to the wear. But enamel does wear, so that leaves you with the metal plating touching the fingers. So which one is going to last longest? Well, in all truth and actuality, let's talk about the ones that last the least amount of time first. Your least wear resistant platings are actually going to be your 10 karat gold, your satin gold, your satin silver, your pearl silver, and some use a plating called black chrome, which is actually, to me, it, it looks like black powder coat that's been maybe top coated with, a, a, with enamel. Powder coat wears relatively well, but I don't think it wears quite as well as some of the others. So your 10 karat gold, your satin gold, your satin silver, your pearl silver, your nickel silver, whatever terms they use for those, and your black chrome are going to be the least wear resistant of the platings you can get. You notice I didn't mention chrome there. Chrome and 10 karat gold are almost always the same price for each kit. And the chrome actually will last a lot, lot longer than the 10 karat gold. The 10 karat gold and some of the others that I mentioned are, are some of the least wear resistant platings that you'll find. I, I almost forgot uh, some manufacturers offer a copper plating like gold it lasts about the same as that it's relatively soft once you wear through the enamel and the copper will wear away you can get bright copper satin copper and they look really good for a while now on parts that aren't handled a whole lot like the nib assembly they can last for a long long time which is why I actually use the copper plated nibs that I've been able to buy with my shell casing pins. We'll talk about those more as we go along. So your best wear is going to come from chrome, it's going to come from the platinum or rhodium uh, platings, and your titaniums, whether it be black or gold titanium, either one. Those are very, very well resistant. The rhodium and the titaniums are also some of the more expensive of the kits that you're going to buy. For example, the chrome and 10 karat gold in a slim line will cost you a couple of dollars. If you go black titanium or gold titanium or rhodium, platinum they call it, it's going to cost you four or five dollars a kit and the price just goes up from there. So let's look at some of the pin kits available in a little more depth. Your three importers have a number of various style kits. There's ballpoints, there are capped roller balls. There are fountain pens. Most of the ball points are twist pens. Most of your kits will come in a plastic bag or a series of plastic bags like you see here. There's plastic bags inside here holding the parts. And those are to keep your parts safe. From I've had this kit for a while. About 10 years. And you can see where the ink exploded from when my shop got really hot before I put in my insulation and my air conditioner. The simplest and least expensive of the pin kits is the slimline. You can see the parts here. And all three of the major importers each have a version of this pin. They're all basically the same. It comes with a center band, a pin clip, the transmission, the nib, and the end cap. And those press into the 7 millimeter brass tubes. They're both the same size. These get glued into your pin blank and the refill. That all comes in the kit. And that refill is your standard cross pin type or style screw in refill. And refills for these are also available from many of the suppliers. As you can see from these parts, the slim lines come in a wide variety of platings as do many other pens. Finished, your traditional slim line can look like this, or you can modify it by adding extra center bands like these. Or you can go without the center band and make it a little thicker and use your own center band, or no center band at all and make them step like these pins here.
This one's using a guitar pick guard for the center band. Or you can make them into casings using a 308 casing. Notice from the label, this says titanium gold. This particular pin is a single barrel pin, and single barrel pins are rapidly becoming my favorite simply because I only have to turn one barrel instead of two. This is the Sierra. This is available from Ernie at Beartooth. This is available from Ed at Exotic Blanks. And I think Penn State has a comparable version of this. This is titanium gold. This is one of my preferred platings. Yes, they cost a little more, but customer satisfaction is my thing. They last longer, they wear better, and my customers are happier. The Sierra is what I used with my autism awareness pen set that you may have seen that video on. Here you see a few Sierras that I turned in various platings, and I'll try to identify those as best I can. And we'll talk more about various pen blanks later. And here you see an example of one of the mixed platings I was talking about earlier. Here you see another single barrel pen kit. This one is available through Penn State. It's called the Executive. The barrel is a little bit longer than that of the Sierra, but not by much. And as you can tell, both the Sierra and the Executive use the Parker style refill. In fact, the Executive is a reproduction of an old Parker Swiss pen. One of my favorite twist pens is a two-piece available through Berea and its suppliers. It's called a Perfect Fit. It's called a Perfect Fit Convertible, actually, and it's called that for a reason. I like this pen kit because it's sturdy, it's reliable. I've had very few problems with the transmissions. It's a Parker-style refill. I think those refills write better than the Cross style. That's my personal opinion. But it's called the convertible because aside from accepting the standard Parker style refill, it takes these Schmidt made pencil inserts and when you click it, it opens the pencil up. It, it works, the, the transmission is actually made to function with these Schmidt pencil inserts. It's a great little pen. I've taken this pen kit out of its shipping bag for easier storage in one of my containers. This is one of the kits that's available from Craft Supplies USA. It's one of the more expensive pen kits that you might buy in the Twist Pen series, but it goes along with a Craft Supplies rollerball and fountain pen set called the Junior Gent. And this is the Junior Gent Twist Pen. Also available from them is the Junior Gent Pencil. Since we're talking about the Junior Gent Pen and Pencil, we might as well continue on with the Junior Gent series and talk about the capped pen. The two tubes are various sizes. These come, it is a capped pen and they come in both fountain pen and rollerball. This is a rollerball. This happens to be a, a, a rhodium or platinum set, and it's called the Junior Gent for a reason. It's a little bit smaller than its father series, the Gentleman's Pen. As you can see in this side-by-side -side comparison, or hopefully you can see in this side-by-side -side comparison, the tubes are significantly larger, the appointments are quite a bit bigger, the Gentleman makes for a bigger, beefier pen. Related to the Junior Gent and Gentleman's pens are an upgraded version of those yet, and that would be 
the junior statesman, and the statesman. The junior statesman is the same size as the junior gent. The statesman is the same size as the gentleman's pen. Again, both come in fountain pen and roller ball. This is a roller ball, this is a fountain pen. And these are both rhodium. The difference between the junior gent and junior statesman and the gentleman's pen versus the statesman is basically the center band. The center band on the junior statesman and the statesman are upgraded. And as you can see here, hopefully, this center ring that goes in between these two pieces is not just a simple black band. Let me see if I can show you the difference with a side com by side comparison of the gentleman's pen and the statesman. Let's focus our attention on the center band. Look at the gentleman. On the gentleman's pen, depending on the platings that you choose, you'll have a small black ring or a small titanium gold ring in the middle of the center band. On the statesman and junior statesman, you'll see that gold ring or that center gold ring that goes between the two silver colored pieces is wider and more ornate. It's actually decorative even. One thing to note about the capped pens that's where the cap either snaps on or screws on to the body of the pen that contains the nib assembly in the case of a roller ball or the nib itself in the case of a fountain pen. A lot of people that like roller balls and fountain pens like pens that you can post. That means that the cap will actually snap onto or screw onto the back of the pen body. In the case of the gentleman's pen, you can see the end cap here, this is not a postable pen. In the case of the statesman, you can see the end cap here, it is not a postable pen. The junior gent and the junior statesman can be either postable or non-postable. It depends on the end cap. Now, you, as you can see with this junior statesman, the end cap here doesn't have any threads on it. This is a non-postable pen. The Junior Gents that I ordered were ordered through a group buy. There is no end cap in this bag. I ordered end caps separately and I ordered end caps that were both postable and non-postable. And here I've inserted some pictures of some of those so that you're not just staring at bags. Another of my favorite capped pens is the Baron. The Baron is made by Berea. It is a postable pen, which means the cap screws on to the back of the pen barrel. It's about the same size as the Junior Gent, and both have been real popular amongst my buyers. One of the biggest differences between the Baron and the Junior Gent is that the Baron is available in a larger variety of platings. You can get them in chrome, you can get them in satin nickel, you can get them in platinum, you can get them in black titanium, gold titanium, there's a wide variety and I think they even make them in copper. Some capped pens like the Baron and those that we've looked at so far can also be turned in what's referred to or called a closed end pen and that's where you don't go all the way through the blank when you drill it and you turn some sort of shape at the end of it. Closed ends can be used in either the main pin barrel or the cap as you can see here. Another twist pin that's available from most of the suppliers is called a cigar. It's got bigger tubes than your slim lines and it makes for a fatter pen. And these wider pens, like the cigar, are popular among people who either don't like skinny pens like me, or people with arthritic fingers that need a pen that's bigger to grab. Another popular twist pen comes from Berea, 
It's called a round top European. It basically uses 8 millimeter tubes. It's Parker style refill. Penn State Industries has one similar to this called the Premium Designer. I've turned both. I actually prefer the round top European. I've had too many of the twist mechanisms or transmissions in the designers fail on me. I have yet to have a Euro uh, transmission fail from Berea. And you can get these in a number of platings as well. Another capped pin that I like is the Churchill. This happens to be a roller ball. They're also available in fountain pen. This one is a special sterling silver plating, which is supposed to be more durable than the regular uh, 24 karat gold. This is a Berea kit. It's got a nice round end cap on both the top and the bottom, and I don't believe this pen is postable. Another pen closely related to the Churchill is the El Grande. In fact, the tubes are the same. The bushings are the same. The only difference is that, and they're both available in rollerball and fountain pen. The, this is a fountain pen here. The only difference is that the end caps of the El Grande, both top and bottom, are flat instead of round. And I honestly can't remember if they're postable. Most of the pen kits that we've talked about so far pretty much run the gamut between a little over a dollar a kit depending on how many you buy at a time up to 20 or more per kit for the Statesman and, and Junior Statesman pens. But there are higher end pen kits out there. I've not turned them all, I don't have them all, but let's look at a few that I do have. Like the Statesman and the Gentleman's pen, these pens are two-piece capped pens. These are non-postable. These are what I would consider high-end pen kits. I can't remember what I paid for these right now, but like most of my gents and statesmans, I got these on a group buy with some other pen turners off of the International Association of Pen Turners Forum. And I honestly don't remember what they cost. I don't, they don't make these anymore. This is called the Junior Emperor and the Emperor. And if memory serves, these were in excess of $35 per kit. Let's take a look at some of the appointments. Let's take a look at the end cap. This is the end cap. These are non-postable pins. The end cap is round with a flat top, or it would be a flat bottom, I guess. And you can see that it's really ornate. There's a center band around the end cap that is also ornate. This is the top cap. It also is ornate on the top and with a band that matches and a matching band on the center band that's decorated. The same holds true for the full-size Emperor. And here are some pictures of what these look like turned and assembled. Also available from Craft Supplies USA back then, I don't know if it still is, was a kit called the Imperial. It's very ornate like the Emperor was. It's just got a different design on all of the rings that go on the ornate pieces and on the end caps. These pins were also in the same price range as the Emperor. So as you've seen from the few examples that I've shown you, and there are many many more styles of pin kits out there now than there was back when I first got started and from when I lopped out my last batch of supplies. Uh, some are relatively simple and plain and some go to great extremes to be as ornate as they can. I uh, recently saw one that, that like the fireman, it's the, the clip is a fire axe. Uh, I don't know that I'm fond of those, but I guess a lot of people like them or they wouldn't be selling them. So uh, for now, when I turn pins, I'll be sticking with the stock that I have because I have a few yet still that I need to to turn and try to get rid of but that's uh, that's just part of the game you buy in bulk when you can to save money if you're gonna do this for quite a while and I 
uh, not only did plan, but I'm still planning to continue to turn and do this for quite a while. I've just expanded my turning over the years from pin turning to doing other things as well, and I enjoy it. I waffled again. <laughs> my apologies. So in this episode, we've talked about pin kits, the wide variety that's, that are available out there. I haven't showed you everything like I said, but I've showed you what I could and what I, the, what, the, the important thing to note is a pin kit is a pin kit is a pin kit. Yes, they all have different instructions and they go together a little bit differently, but basically you're gluing one or two tubes into pieces of wood or other material and turning them into the right shape and the right size to be able to press the parts in and have a functional pin. It's really that simple. Yes, yeah, some are a little more difficult than others. Some require a little more finesse in the turning. Some require a specially turned diameter at the center ring. And I may show you some of that one of these days. The perfect fit is a perfect example of that. But it's easy to do and, uh, and the Euro and the Premium Designer by Penn State also require uh, a different diameter or a, basically a step diameter where the center band goes just because of the way they go together. In the next episode, we'll actually get into pin blanks and talk a little bit about that. So I, I really, I hope this has helped. I hope that you can find it. I hope that some of you find it useful. I hope that at least some of you find the information useful and beneficial. I really appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe if you've liked anything you've seen here and make sure you come back and see us again. Thanks again for watching.